the perfect safari. The African continent's wealth of animals, both in number of species and in environmental diversity, is incomparable to other areas of the Earth. In its more than 18 million square miles, we can find more than 1,100 different species of mammals and 2,600 types of birds. Africa's wide range of climatic conditions, from the most intense heat to the most bitter cold, and the diversity between dry and humid zones, permit such a variety of fauna. On the African continent, we can find the fastest animals, the largest, and even the rarest and most dangerous on planet Earth. Buffalo, first part. One of the most sought after animals on the African continent and in high demand on the safaris is the African buffalo. These mammals are found practically throughout the whole continent, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. The International Safari Club, distinguishing by geographical distribution, five subspecies of African buffalo. Today, it's estimated that there are around 900,000 specimens on the African savanna. The countries where they are easiest to see because of their large numbers are Kenya, Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa. The Cape Buffalo is the largest of all the subspecies. It's the bovid that we are going to meet. We will observe where it lives and we will see how it is hunted. African buffalo have practically no natural predator. The lion and the hyena are their only enemy, especially for the young or the weak. This group of hunters has already located an old male in the herd. Now it's time to follow the trail they leave as they flee, catch them off guard or wait for their challenge. The trackers will carry out the first task. The blood tells us where the bullet hit and the sound of the branches cracking will determine the distance he has travelled. These moments are the most dangerous. The buffalo knows that it is seriously injured, it won't hesitate to die in an attack. Repeating the shot is vital in these circumstances. It will almost always be hidden by branches. There's tension in the behavior of the professional hunter and the group. At these times, we must be wary of a buffalo attack. Don't forget that these mammals have claimed more victims among hunters and professionals than the rest of the big five together. 
Bueno, vaya, pues, vaya refecho. Huitete. Safaris en África signify some hardships. Long trips by plane. On the way there, we will be energetic and enthusiastic, observing and taking in all the information that comes our way. The buffalo is one of the big five on African safaris. On some safaris, you have to fly by light aircraft to reach remote, sparsely populated areas, landing on sand landing strips. When we decide to hunt the African buffalo, it's necessary to have a positive attitude and be prepared with the necessary equipment to avoid surprises once we have started the adventure. Hi, Manuel. Good Jesus, how are you? You've taken the African adventure really seriously, haven't you? You've been here six years now. Yes, nearly seven years. The first and last night's here. That's right. Let's see where we'll sleep. Perfect, I'll show you now. African safari lodges are places of rest for hunters and have minimal environmental impact. Committed to the local culture and offer high levels of comfort while being immersed in nature. On this safari, we're going to use two rifles. This one's a 375 Holland and Holland Blazer with a two and a half, 10 by 50 scope for precise shooting at around 100, 150 yards. It's good for small and medium-sized antelope, and you can use it for buffalo and large animals. We'll need armor-tipped ammo in that case, if we hunt elephant. These are federal. Then there's this one, it's more powerful, a 416 Rigby, heavy duty for 70, 80 yard shots. This is the one we'll probably use for buffalo, why do you think uh, the hunting is very important for South Africa and for Africa in general? Hunting is very important. Um, it's, it's, a, it's the biggest part of conservation. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the trophy hunters who paid um, money for trophies. That money um, we used to do anti-poaching. We used that to pay all the salaries of the people and do conservation in the form of water. We pump water for the animals in the dry season. You know. Um, it's very important to bring foreign money to the country. Very, very important for us. And what do you think if the hunting will stop? You know, there's a lot of pressure on, on hunting at this moment, right over the world. All the anti-hunting organizations, they put a lot of pressure on us. Um, and I bet not a good thing because I don't think they realize that when, when hunting go away, especially when trophy hunting go away, then the next thing is um, the animals will disappear. There won't be animals left if people don't protect them. Once there's a value in an animal, um, the farm owners can protect the animals, they can hunt the animals, they can generate money um, from the animals and they can spend it in uh, the conservation. Before going out to the hunting area, we must test the rifle at a shooting range. The bumps and knocks to the rifle and scope while traveling mean they can lose precision. The professional hunter can also evaluate the weapon here and determine how we are going to use it. The distance at which the rifle is tested depends on the species that's going to be shot, the area where it's going to be hunted, taking into account the terrain and the vegetation that we're going to find. The distances at which the buffalo is going to be shot are normally from 10 to 200 yards. The first shot is usually around 100 yards and the next one closer. The minimum legal security calibre with which we can hunt and confront a buffalo in safety is the 375 Holland & Holland. 
The recommended projectile for the 375 is the 300 grains, as it's the heaviest and most popular, the one that most hunters have in their gun cupboard. If we want to reduce any risks when hunting, we can go for larger calibers, which will give us more power in the shot. They could be 404 and 416 with 400 grain tips. With these, the impact will be faster, especially if the buffalo is charging. For the first shot, the expanding bullets of superior quality will be used, and solid ones for second shots. If the shot is frontal, the armored bullet is recommended because it reaches more organs. The rifles were perfect. Now we just need some targets. The experience we have from hunting in places other than Africa when on a buffalo safari has a relative value when hunting one of the big five. It will help us to move in the field without making noise, to have confidence in handling weapons, precision when shooting, all generic skills typical of an experienced hunter. But with buffalo hunting, we should always let ourselves be guided by the professional hunter. They know the hunting area, the behavior of the species that we might find in addition to the one that we are going to hunt. He's going to tell us where to stalk, how we're going to hunt, when we're going to shoot, and we must know why we want that animal. Many things could happen on a safari, but what will always save our lives is staying calm and following the instructions and recommendations of the professional hunter. Buffalo, apart from their powerful horns for defense, have poorly developed senses of sight and hearing, but they have an extraordinary and keen sense of smell. We aren't going to catch it unawares by waiting for the buffalo when it goes to drink. It will always be on guard, wary, because this is when they're attacked most often by predators, as they are areas where they are usually present. We must stalk, taking all possible precautions and surprise the buffalo before being noticed. It nearly went down. I took the shot a little from behind to go through it because it was at an angle. It's dying. Stalking buffalo in the savanna is an activity that requires significant physical effort from the hunter. Those who don't think they're capable of walking long distances 
following the trails of the herds among the thorns, should look for another species that is less demanding and not so dangerous. Buffalo normally like scrubby terrain with thick vegetation for cover, and that's where we will have to follow them. As we don't have an impenetrable hide like them, when stalking them, we will suffer from the thousands of species of thorny plants that exist in Africa, which will mercilessly tear at our clothes and skin. African professionals calmly move through this type of terrain with shorts that seem to mock the clumsiness of the clients by walking without feeling a thing. Anyone wanting to join a buffalo hunt should be able to walk at a normal pace for four to six hours without stopping. And even for several days in a row. You don't have to run and you don't need to be Superman. But the buffalo won't give up his skin easily and that makes the hunter suffer and value his trophy more when he gets it. Just an experience, we have been very close to buffalo. But they got wind again, so they disappeared again. They're still standing in the bush. Now we are in an open, on an open area where maybe they, they're going to pass this open area. So we, we're going to check if they pass us. So we will see. The success of the buffalo hunt is determined by two fundamental factors after finding the animals. A calm and stealthy approach, so as not to alert the herd or the buffalo, and a precise and accurate shot. This will determine whether we hunt the buffalo or he hunts us. Remember, the buffalo has a very hostile nature. Leaving an injured animal with such a belligerent character could lead to serious problems. The professional hunter keeps searching and advancing, whatever the cost. On this hunt in Mopani, in the north of South Africa, after several days, the hunter's shot was at the largest and most active buffalo. The bullet was well placed. The strength of the buffalo means he will go many yards before his legs give in. With the help of a dog, and after 500 yards following the bloody trail, we have found the old and spectacular buffalo, its horns scarred by years of fighting. Sometimes during the time I said, oh shit. Fine. <laughs> Buffalo tend to move in areas of scrub, with thorns and bushes, and may force us to shoot through the undergrowth, or in groups where the other animals are constantly moving. The advantage we have is that the animal will normally stare at us defiantly, or will let us take a first shot with the animal standing or moving slowly. 
that's the shot that we have to make good use of. That's the one that will stop the buffalo and prevent it from being wounded following the herd when they run. African buffalo are one of the toughest species in the animal kingdom. Weighing almost a ton with very powerful muscles, large and solid bones, and, above all, legendary tenacity and resistance, make this animal an easy target to hit and difficult to shoot down. Added to this is the fact that the hunter is often not used to using high-caliber rifles with so much recoil, and this can mean less precision in the placement of the shot. Special emphasis must be placed on the fact that it's essential to have practiced enough with the caliber that we're going to use. Until we have full confidence in our ability to hit the target using a high caliber rifle. On these pursuits in the Matisi area of Western Zimbabwe, the safari participants are expert and professional hunters. We'll observe how they make the approach and when's the right moment to take the shot. Many days tracking, eh? On African buffalo safaris, there are a variety of shots we can take. They can be standing, in a frontal position, looking directly at us with the nose raised. Our biggest concern when executing this shot is that the shot is centered. If it goes to the sides, we'll hit the powerful muscles and bones of the shoulders. And that's a shot that won't affect the vital organs and it will allow the injured animal to continue limping with the rest of the herd, complicating the hunt. One frequent error when shooting buffalo is, depending on the height of the buffalo's face, that the shot hits the animal's nose and doesn't reach the chest, wherein we must aim our bullet. In this case, it was perfect, downing the buffalo on the spot. A new group of old males appear from the right, without having noticed our presence. The professional hunter tells the hunter to wait. Ramiro is shooting with a solid bullet and the buffalo are crossing in front of each other as they run. Unintentionally, two animals can be downed with the same shot. The professional hunter recommends the finishing shot even though the animal is lying down.
Well done, my friend. <laughs> In Africa, when hunting a buffalo, they say that the point where the bullet hits is more important than what is used to hit it. There's a herd right here. But before you can shoot, you have to get closer to the animal. Once again, we have surprised the buffalo, allowing us to make a perfect shot. Victor's happiness is evident. They get this when they're fully grown. You see solid horns. This part here and this part are soft. When they're young, it's soft. But this is solid. You have to shoot the old ones. See this here is soft and then it closes up. The buffalo trophy was traditionally valued for its size, its width in particular. This way of valuing the trophy by Rowland Ward represented a serious problem by prioritizing the hunting of buffalo in their reproductive prime, when their horns have not suffered anywhere, without having in some cases the bony helmet closed, hard and well developed. A leader of the herd would be eliminated, affecting the conservation of the species. Nowadays, the International Safari Club is becoming more influential, considering more sustainable hunting, assessing at the same time the width of the horns and the width Beautiful. of the bony helmet. Thus, the old males, although being more worn by age and fighting are considered more ethical trophies. To value the buffalo trophy before it's shot, we have to use the ears as a reference. If it's a good male, they should be inside the inner curve of the horns. It will be an excellent trophy if you can't get your fist between the ears and the curve. So Tobias, what do you think after so many days and hours and kilometers stalking those buffaloes. After stalking for three how days. Do you, how do you feel now? I'm feeling very happy, exhausted. After stalking for about, Nicht 50, die Kamera schauen. about 50 kilometers, three days in 35, 36 degrees. Today, after a good morning hunt, we were lucky to, uh, our tracker found the buffaloes. And we were happy, I was happy to get a good clear shot on them. Taining buffalo meat requires time and effort. Now that we have it in the field, freshly killed, it's difficult to transport the whole animal to the camp's butchering room. The first thing the safari assistants do is to skin it, 
removing the entrails, reducing weight and volume, removing everything that isn't good to eat. When you have the use of a small vehicle, it will be split by the ribs once skinned, loaded and taken to the camp. Eating healthy and wholesome food is becoming more and more fashionable around the world. Consequently, buffalo meat is entering consumer food markets. It has healthier properties than beef. The African buffalo lives more than twice as long as a cow and raises three times as many calves. It contains a greater amount of minerals such as iron and a lower percentage of fat and calories than the cow due to enzymes found in its digestive system which transform the pasture that the animal grazes into pure protein. For gourmet food lovers, as well as people who have a healthy eating habit, buffalo meat is an option to consider when choosing the menu. Not only for its gastronomic benefits, but also for its exquisite flavour. The perfect buffalo safari is a guaranteed adventure.